The Horseshoe Crabs are kept in an aerated saltwater tank in a room exposed to a regulated light-dark cycle. Before starting any of these recording techniques, the animal is chilled in an ice bucket for about 10 minutes and then secured to a wooden platform by placing two stainless steel screws in the prosoma and two in the opistosoma. The platform is weighted underneath with granite so that it sinks in water. The electroretinogram, or ERG, is used to monitor eye sensitivity over time. It measures the gross electrical response of all cells in the eye to a flash of light. Tools needed for this procedure include a screwdriver, petroleum jelly, ringer solution, a pipette, an LED, a recording chamber, stainless steel screws, and a cotton swab. We use a self-made recording chamber to measure the ERG. The body is designed to hold a saline reservoir in contact with the eye. The lid contains a silver chloride wire for coupling the conductive solution to an amplifier and a small hole sized to accommodate an LED. Before attachment, the underside of the chamber is coated with petroleum jelly. The chamber is then secured over the horseshoe crab eye with two screws, filled with saline and capped. The animal is placed in a light tight cage in a tank filled with seawater over the gills. The LED cable is inserted into the chamber lid. The signal lead is clipped to the chamber wire and the reference lead to one of the implanted screws, and both leads are connected to the head stage of a high impedance differential amplifier for signal amplification and noise filtering. The cage is then closed to block room light from reaching the animal. The head stage is connected to the amplifier and the amplifier filter is set to pass frequencies below about 10 Hz. From there, the signal is sent to an oscilloscope for viewing and to a data acquisition board for computer analysis and storage. We use a custom-made program written in LabVIEW to deliver light stimuli from the LED and to record the ERG signal. The LED is triggered with a 100 millisecond pulse of 5 volts every 10 minutes. On the left is displayed the ERG waveform to each light flash, and on the right is plotted the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of successive flash waveforms for tracking changes in eye sensitivity over time. With ERG recordings one can study the effects of light adaptation and circadian neural modulation. The eye conveys visual messages to the brain and the spike responses of its optic nerve fibers. The encoded messages can be studied by recording extracellularly from single nerve fibers. Circadian clock messages fed back to the eye can also be studied for this method. Tools needed for this procedure include a screwdriver, thread, a traffin, ringer solution, rongeurs, vanna scissors, a recording chamber, curved forceps, a fine needle probe, a dull scalpel, surgical scissors, and a suction electrode. The recording chamber is designed with a tongue to accommodate the nerve. To start, 20 milliliters of blood may be drained from the horse crab by inserting a 16 gauge needle between the hinge muscles into the heart. Exsanguination is not necessary but makes optic nerve dissection easier. With the animal secured to the platform, the location of the optic nerve is estimated by drawing a slightly curved line on the carapace between the lateral and median eyes. A circular hole is then made in the carapace with a traffin. The hole is the same diameter as the chamber bottom. The center of the hole is located about 2 cm anterior to the lateral eye and slightly dorsal to the line so that the nerve runs along the ventral portion of the chamber. Overlying connective tissue is cleared until a full length of nerve is visible and the exposed nerve is freed from surrounding and underlying tissue. A strand of thread is looped around the nerve and pulled into the chamber through the semicircular opening in the bottom.
Through this same opening, the nerve is gently guided into the chamber by pulling on the string. As the nerve enters, the chamber bottom is pushed into the hole so as to minimize stretch on the nerve. The chamber is then affixed with two screws and filled with ringer solution. After chamber attachment, the animal is placed in a light tight cage in a tank filled with seawater over the gills. The chamber interior is visualized under a stereoscope and cotton is padded around the opening in the bottom to prevent leakage of blood into and ringers out of the chamber. The chamber is refilled with fresh ringer solution. Residual tissue is removed with fine vanished scissors and tweezers. A small cut is made in the sheath that encapsulates the nerve and the nerve is separated from the sheath with a fine needle probe. The sheath is gradually unwrapped and removed by cutting along the length of the nerve. A tiny fiber bundle is then separated from the nerve using the probe and cut at the end furthest from the eye for afferent fiber recording and at the end closest to the eye for efferent fiber recording. We use an AM system suction electrode filled with ringer solution for recording which is connected with tubing to a Gilman syringe for suction. The electrode tip is made by fire polishing the end of a 1 mm diameter borosilicate glass capillary. A BNC connection provides the signal lead and the reference lead is a silver chloride wire wrapped around the electrode to reduce noise. The electrode tip is positioned into the recording chamber and the cut end of the nerve bundle is drawn into the glass tip via suction. The signal and reference leads are connected to the head stage of a differential amplifier for signal amplification and noise filtering. The amplifier output is passed on to an oscilloscope for viewing and a data acquisition card for computer analysis and storage. We use a custom-made program written in LabVIEW to control light stimuli and a digital spike discriminator to record spike trains. A fiber optic light pipe is employed for single cell illumination, whereas a computer-controlled video display is used for pattern stimulation. With optic nerve recordings, one can study signal transmission between the eyes and the brain. Intraretinal recording involves inserting a microelectrode directly into cells in the eye and recording the intracellular voltage fluctuations induced by light. Tools needed for this procedure include a screwdriver, an L-shaped lucid platform with threaded screw holes, a microelectrode holder with a glass electrode, stainless steel screws, tweezers, and a fine scalpel. After the horseshoe crab is secured to a wooden platform, a lucite plate with preset screw holes is attached to the carapace with two screws on the side and one on the top. The animal is placed in a light tight cage in a tank filled with seawater over the gills. A motorized micropositioner is fastened to the blade with screws and the positioner arm is aligned over the eye. A batch of glass micropipettes are pulled from 1 mm outer diameter borosilicate glass and the tips backfilled via capillary action by placing the pipettes in a vial of 3 molar potassium chloride solution for a few minutes. The rest of the pipette is filled manually with the salt solution and inserted into a microelectrode holder pre-filled with solution to prevent bubble formation. The electrode holder is then inserted into the head stage of an intracellular amplifier affixed to the micropositioner. 
a section of the retina is exposed by carefully cutting away a tiny square section of the dorsal cornea with the scalpel. A drop of ringer solution is placed on the exposed tissue to prevent drying and the micropipette is advanced towards the retina. When the pipette tip touches the solution, the current injection mode of the intracellular amplifier is engaged and the electrode impedance is measured. Micropipettes with impedances outside the range of 20 to 70 mega ohms are discarded. Those in this range are advanced in micron-sized steps into the retina and impaled into cells by vibrating the tip electronically. Light stimuli are delivered to impaled cells with a fiber optic pipe or video display. Three types of cells may be encountered in the horseshoe crab eye. Retinular cells, eccentric cells and pigment cells. Retinular cells show a large depolarizing response to light. Eccentric cells show a train of action potentials riding on a depolarizing response and pigment cells show no light responses at all. The response is observed on an oscilloscope and recorded to a computer. With intraretinal recordings, one can study the cellular basis of vision.